When a runaway girl returns home and murders her family, her suicide in the next door neighbor's house winds up cursing theirs. Let's talk about Annabelle. A prequel spin-off to The Conjuring, 2014's Annabelle sees a pregnant couple get home invaded by their neighbor's cult-crazy daughter, Annabelle. And after killing herself while holding one of the dolls, she scrawls something on the wall in blood, and a demon gets summoned that latches itself onto the doll. Or, well, you know, if, if you watch the next movie, um, spoiler, uh, if you watch the next Annabelle, somehow, maybe Annabelle recognized the Annabelle doll, because, you know, this is the actual Annabelle. Maybe she recognized the doll, and the demon that was in her body gave it up to go back into it. I don't know, but yeah. <laughs> Anyway, from there on, we watch as the demon torments the family, trying to get a hold of the newborn soul, even though it already had Janice's, I mean Annabelle, even though it already had Annabelle's. So, why did you give it up? <laughs> That's really only a question you'll have after watching the other ones and you really think about this movie. But the demon, he had his body. I mean, well, maybe he just wanted more. He just wanted to up the kill count. Very possible. Demons are evil. When it comes to characters, I thought our main family was okay. I liked Maya, the mom, and there's no complaints or anything to say regarding the baby, because, you know, it's the baby. And the husband was alright. He wasn't anything special, though. I also liked the character of Father Perez, who should have died when he went flying through the air, by the way. And the only character I had mixed feelings for was Evelyn, the black lady who lost her daughter in a car crash. Her story was good, but I think the actress could have been a bit better. It really felt like she was just reading a script with no emotion, especially when talking about the car accident. <laughs> Maybe she just really gotten over at that point and it's nothing to her, but it, it really did just feel like there was no emotion in it. When it comes to the scares, this movie has plenty, but almost all of them are jump scares. And boy oh boy do I find an excessive use of jump scares to be both cheap and annoying. However, it didn't ruin the movie for me. And even though I knew some of them were coming, since I've seen the movie before, they were still pretty effective. Still annoying, but they worked. The kills in this movie aren't anything special, however there's actually some human kills in this one, compared to The Conjuring. The worst thing you see is a cult member gets shot up by some cops, and it definitely wasn't anything crazy. In terms of violence and gore, you'd probably expect to see this type of content in a PG-13 movie, which is kind of funny to say considering one person slits their wrist and the other one again gets shot up by cops, but yeah. Boobies bad, but if it's only suicide and murder, you might get PG-13. Anyway, let's take a moment now to talk about the Annabelle doll. In my opinion, I think she looks killer. No, she's not your traditional modern Barbie, or in this case, an 80s cabbage patch kid. Eh. And the real Annabelle was a Raggedy Ann doll. But I think this design is a lot better, because, you know, it's a horror movie. Not saying it's gotta look scary, I just mean, like, do you really wanna watch a Raggedy Ann doll? And I know some people complain that it looks like it's trying too hard, it's not a pretty doll, it's just supposed to be scary, but keep in mind the doll you're seeing has some damage done to it, along with this weird silvery paint. I don't know, maybe it's from like aging or something, I'd... The doll is also an old school looking antique, like something your grandma might buy to put on a shelf. I mean it was made by one guy in a workshop, along with like 99 others and then some other dolls. It was just handcrafted by some dude who thought it looked good. I think those things allow for it to not really fit in with the beauty standards for children's toys. That out of the way, I had a really fun time with this movie and thought it was pretty good overall. Annabelle isn't your traditional killer doll movie, though it's easily one of the best, if not the best modern one, excluding Chucky because he's been around since the 80s. So, Oh yeah, and a random little note I jotted down, Mama Maya was way too happy when she saw her baby just seconds after witnessing her new friend's suicide. I mean, I understand you were scared for your child's life and now you're happy she's back, but are you really going to lose all that sadness that fast? You literally just watched a woman leap from a window, crash onto the ground, and have a pool of blood all around her. <laughs> I don't know, I think she still should have been a little sad or shook up, but whatever, it's just a random thought. In the end, I would rate 2014's Annabelle an 8 out of 10. If you've seen this movie, I would love to hear your thoughts on it down in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Have a nice day. Looking for more horror fun? You're goddamn right. Then check out the VHS comic book series, a parody of the horror genre that follows the lives of three teens as they fight to survive a horror movie where every day is loaded with blood, boobs, and buds. The first two issues can be found in the description below. I was obsessed with VHS.